today's shows is at the Monarch Sculpture Park. This is the entrance here. We have an appointment. It's a beautiful place. Like always, it's raining. It's the visit with a person of high strangeness. Uh, today we are at Monarch uh, Sculpture Park and uh, we're going to meet the lady that owns the place and we're going to talk about some of the artwork and uh, for those of you that don't live here there's a website we'll show you later and then um, it's a wonderful place we've been here before um, it, not per film because we um, anyway I have been here before let's just go that way and so what happens, it rains, so we're going to show you a lot of the indoor activities that are here. And so come right along and um, enjoy your trip to Monarch Sculpture Park. Hello Myrna, how are you? Doing great, thank you. Do you remember how we met? I do indeed. I sat down beside you at uh, Costco when we were eating lunch. Uh huh. But he, here's the rest of the story. I was at home just not doing anything and I wanted a hot dog really bad. <laughs> I don't like hot dogs. <laughs> and I went to Costco's and there was an older gentleman sitting there. And I asked, could I sit there? And he said, okay. And I said, how are you? And he said, fine. And he got up and left. And he made room for you, see? Yes, he did. Uh, yeah. We were meant to meet. Yeah, was it? Yeah, and then we found out that I had been here before and I couldn't couldn't tape and so mm -hmm. the universe arranged it. I emailed your website to a lot of people mm -hmm. and uh, they thought you was a wonderful person. They looked at some uh, you know your pictures. So so tell me how did you get from from here to here, do you know? Well I started as a teacher. I have a master's degree in literature. Uh-huh. And a friend and I attended a dealer's open and he made the mistake of saying how easy it was to become an art dealer. Oh. And we looked at each other and went, this is what we'd like to do. Uh -huh. So we opened contemporary prints in Lakewood, Washington mm -hmm. and had it for about three years. And my business partner decided to go back to school, so we dissolved the business. Mm -hmm. But then I went to art school mm -hmm. just to get first-hand training, intending to open another art gallery. Mm -hmm. But I started taking the classes and I found I loved what I was doing and the creative process just melded with me. And when I found carving, I started carving wood first mm -hmm. and then I discovered stone. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had found my life's passion. You're calling, yeah. Yes. And so, that was um, in the early 80s, and I, I was very fortunate. I was participating in exhibitions, and I had my first solo exhibition in uh, 1984. And then um, a visiting artist from the Ukraine came in for the Goodwill Games in Seattle, and I met him, Vasily Federuk. And I didn't know at the time, but he was in the planning stages of organizing a stone symposium in the Ukraine. And two years after I met him, I received an invitation to be a participant. So I went to the Ukraine and I created a Firebird based on a Ukrainian myth. Mm -hmm. It's in red granite. It carries an environmental message on its wings. Mm -hmm. And I took first place at that symposium. And I was asked by um, the head of the Artists' Union of the Ukraine to come back um, the following year with a body of work to tour th the Ukraine. And on top of that invitation came one um, from Lithuania because a Lithuanian artist had mm -hmm participated and seen my work. Mm -hmm. and well, we're going to be able to uh, see a picture of that so we know what we... Oh yes. Oh, oh, okay, so 
how about we leave it there um, as far as that goes? Mm -hmm. And then we could get back to that when when the friends can actually see what we're talking about. Oh, that's fine. But that's that's the, how my art evolution. career began. Oh, okay. So here, let me be quiet. We'll do it your way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I also attended that year um, the first symposium of Central Europus Parkus in Vilnius, Lithuania. And two years later, I went back to create a symbolic gate for that park. And since that time, I, I had a, an idea about opening my own sculpture park. So I was looking in Europe at the different facilities, what I liked best about each one, and what I, I liked was they had living quarters for the artists, working space for them, and outdoor installation room once the pieces were created. Most galleries and museums only have indoor space. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, why couldn't I do that here in my home state of Washington? And so, um, a woman who was taking classes from me overheard my conversation about this idea and came to me and said, why aren't you doing it? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't feel I can do it on my own. And she said, fine, I'll match you dollar for dollar. Let's find the property. And so we began the search. And we looked in King County and Pierce. And finally, uh, she saw a notice in the paper about the property here in, in outside of Tonino. And we came and looked at it and said, yes, this is where we're going to start the park. And that's how Monarch began. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monarch uh, named after the butterfly, I take it? Yes. We do have quite a few butterflies here. Yes, we do. And um, unfortunately, my <laughs> business partner passed away last year. We had a memorial for her where we released monarch butterflies. Oh, my. So. And so you've been here, what, 15 years? Oh, uh, Actually, since 1994. Oh, that's longer than that. Mm -hmm. But we've been open to the public mm -hmm. since 1998. It took mm -hmm. us that long to get the property ready and to establish a 501c3. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that later. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, and eventually we'll show you website and everything. So the other thing is, uh, I don't think I introduced you properly. So if anybody's looking for your art, they would look for your signature as? Myrna Orsini. Orsini. O-R-S-I-N-I. This is just, it, the energy here is so good. So when you bought the place, did you go by energy or looks? Or? A, a bit of both. Mm -hmm. We just felt that this was right. And the, what we did, we purchased 70 acres, which is across the road, mm -hmm. initially to be the park. Mm -hmm. a beautiful view of Mount Rainier, a small lake at the back of the property, rolling hills. It's absolutely gorgeous. Is, is it Offord Lake? No, it's right it's here. It's another one. It's right here across mm -hmm. from this. And two years later, this property came up for sale. And I personally purchased it mm -hmm. and moved my home and studio out here. And then we started clearing the grounds and mm -hmm. preparing for the symposium that we held here, a stone mm -hmm. symposium, in 1998, where we um, invited 13 carvers from nine countries and they were here for six weeks. We provided the stone. They created their pieces. That started the park permanent collection. Mm -hmm. And then we were, op were able to open to the public. I understand you just, uh, you just went to Texas to the LBJ Ranch. Is that what you told Yes, me? I did. I installed my new piece, which is, um, I never quite remember. It's Cosmic Mother. And... It's Yule marble, and the piece, the marble is three feet high, and the pedestal that has a kinetic element to it is an additional six feet. And it was carved at Marble Marble, the symposium in Marble, Colorado, and then taken down to um, Benini Sculpture Ranch, which is the old Lyndon Baines Johnson ranch mm -hmm. that he... Um, coveted as a boy and after he became president the first act he did for himself was to buy that property no so yeah so I'm gonna have you 
give us a little tour here and then we'll get back to some of your personal stories, okay? Wonderful! What's an apple tree? The works that you're about to see are in our indoor gallery, which we call the Papillon Gallery, are from current and past artists in residence. The first wall that uh, you'll be seeing and the wood pieces in front of it are by Thomas Yodi, originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. He does also uh, these stretch fabric pieces over wood this piece has over 40 integral parts to it. We'll take a still. Huh? When you say uh, your residents, do they stay here? Yes, the artists stay here. Initially, for the first few years, we were paying the artists to come here, uh -huh. providing the material that, for, that they worked with, and uh, they could stay here for up to four months. Because of the economy and our mm -hmm. limited funds, the artists now pay us to be here. Mm -hmm. And they can stay as long as they, they wish. And they create new bodies of work. Mm -hmm. And we represent it in our gallery, or on our grounds, and they always leave us when they do depart one piece mm -hmm. for our permanent collection. Oh, how wonderful. Mm -hmm. Bell Wellman, a professor of art for 30 years at the University of Washington, corrected, um, excuse me, created this bronze piece entitled Woman with Hoops. The painting on the wall of the seated figures is also a Wellman piece, and one of his figurative Drawings in Conte chocolate <coughs> and charcoal is also represented here. Oh, I like this one. Mm -hmm. This is the Conte chalk piece. We have others uh, all around the room of his figurative studies, and you'll be seeing those a little later. Um, this High Luster Bronze piece is, is by Orsini, myself, and it's titled Chi, the center of our being. Just nothing behind me, is there? Mm -mm. Oh, okay, leave it to me. I come in here and run in the things. Just beautiful. Hmm. Okay. Okay. The pink alabaster piece that you're seeing is titled La Concolage. It also is done by myself, or seen. Um, and the figurative piece in limestone called Summertime is another work of mine. Tell me, um, how do you name your pieces? The idea for the piece, and as I'm working it, the title comes. It comes, it'll tell you. Hmm? It tells me. Just as the stone.